this is my favorite UI right now because of how easy it is to get a great looking image. It's free, it's open source, and it can be used both locally and in the cloud. Just check out how this easy prompt here gets you an image like this. And it also starts up basically like this. Well, not really like this, maybe like that. Still pretty good, eh? Oh, by the way, did you hear about the guy that walks into a bar? He was then disqualified from the limbo contest. AI. And it is freaking amazing. But first, let's do a cat in a hat, and we are generating. And this is coming in live right now. And uh, we have here a cat in a hat. And honestly, it looks freaking good. I'm going to show you two ways to image on the local version and the cloud version. So what you see here is ruined focus and it is freaking amazing. So the local installation here is going to be through the Patreon guide, but you can also follow along in the video and just do the same steps. But it's going to be easy to just copy and paste from, from the guide if you prefer that. Now there's going to be a link that you can download here. If you don't have a 7-zip or a way to open the 7-zip packages, go to this link here. Make sure that you download this one here and install that one. Once you have the zip, you can go right click, show more options, 7-zip, extract two. That will get you a folder like this. And once inside of here, you're gonna run or double click the run.bat file, which will launch this window here. What happens now is that uh, Ruin Focus is gonna download the base model for you. You can also, if you have any specific models that you have downloaded from Civitai, for example, you can place them inside the models checkpoints folder. This is also indicated in the guide here. It's also a direct link here to the base model if you don't want Ruin Focus to automatically download it this for some reason. The download is going to take a couple of minutes depending on your internet speed. So uh, I'll skip forward. So our main model has now downloaded and then it's now downloaded some extra models. So it's uh, downloading a LoRa here and the LCM LoRa. And then it's going to download some some other the, the couple of control net models stuff like that so just leave it running for a little bit and uh, you'll be done in, in no time once that's finished and you have no errors it, you will see app started successful and it will automatically open a browser window that looks like this if you are getting errors i have some troubleshooting in the patreon guide so check that out and if you still can't solve it you know comment down below and i'll see what i can do so what you see here is ruined focus and it is freaking amazing. Before delving into all the advanced stuff, which at a glance you might say, well, where is the advanced stuff? I'll show you in a second. But first let's do a cat in a hat and we are generating. And this is coming in live right now. And uh, we have here a cat in a hat. And honestly, it looks freaking good. And if we do this again, you can see again, it is coming in live with this is not sped up. However, I have a very fast GPU, but we are getting pretty good looking images just from a simple prompt like this. We could do a penguin in a tuxedo. We're now getting our little penguin in a tuxedo. And as soon as it's finished, you can see it here. Now this is kind of a little overbaked. Got some lines here in the background, so not as good as our cat in a hat, but we can fix that with a model switch that I'll show you later in the video. I'm prompting for anime girl riding a bicycle in Studio Ghibli universe. And again, I mean, looks pretty cool just from simple prompts like that. And we're not cherry picking this at all. I haven't uh, cut anything away. I mean, I could have cut out that penguin, still kept it. So I'm showing it all to you right now. Now let's delve a little, a little more into the details here and what we can do and how to get it even better. Hey, just a quick note from the editing side here. Everything that we're discussing today can be found in a detailed text and image guide in my Patreon. So check that out. It's going to be super easy to follow. And uh, you're also supporting my work. Thank you. Now, if you don't want to install this, just head over to Think Diffusion, press launch up up here, go to focus, press launch. You have the choice of rapid and turbo. Since they give me hours for free, I usually go with the faster one, but uh, choose the one that uh, suits you best. Select how much time you want or just press launch. And in a minute or two, your focus will be starting. And that will look something like this. So if you would prompt for a cat in a hat here, you will get the basically the same speed I had previously. This is a 24 gigabyte VRAM machine, same as my local one. Now we were gonna talk about that little button down here. 
this will get you the advanced settings here. So there's a lot going on compared to the original focus. We have a couple of tabs we're going to take a look at. I have settings, models, OBP, which is super cool. I'm going to get to that in a bit. Evo, power up and uh, well, info. So we'll start with the setting here. So first you have the uh, just a simple performance. You can select speed quality. You can use the LCM sampler as well, or you can set a custom one. I prefer to use a custom one. And I usually set that at uh, 2 um, Keras, which is uh, one of my favorites, uh, about 25, 30 steps. If you're using SDXL, which this is preset for, uh, I would probably lower this to about 4 or 5, uh, which is a good CFG for this. Now, you don't have to use custom. You can use the speed one or the quality one. And next up, you have aspect ratios. And now you might be wondering, why, why don't I have any size boxes uh, like that? that I can uh, enter it myself. Well, because SDXL has been tested to work very well with some preset aspect ratios. And these have been used inside of Ruined Focus. So these are the ones that you can select here. And because of the main goal of Ruined Focus to be easy to use, easy to get great looking images without a lot of fuss, you don't have any other options to set your width and height. If you're here for ease of use, well, this is probably the only thing you're gonna need for now. You have your 916, your 16 by 9, you have a 43, 1 by 1, etc. This is all I need. Let's use a 16 by 9 here, for example. As a preset, you have the cinematic style selected. There are a lot to choose from, but we're just gonna stick with this for now. You can select the amount of uh, images you want to generate. You can also, here's a little trick for you. If you set this to zero, you will just keep generating infinitely. So this can be a great way to just keep generating if you're stepping away from the computer, if you're leaving it overnight and just want a lot of images, set it to zero and let it generate. It's going to generate until you get back and stop it or until it crashes, whichever happens first. You have a random C down here. So if this is selected, you will get a new image a new seed, a new starting noise each time. And if you deselect this, you will get the same image each time if you don't change any of the settings. So now that I'm getting a cat here, we need to stop this first. And if we deselect this, we put in seed, you can say one or, you know, 9,000, doesn't matter, any number. And if we keep generating now, we will get the same cat in a hat over and over and over again. Now you can't change this while you're generating. You have to stop it first. So you can see now we're getting this gray cat here looking upwards a little bit with a black hat. And now we're getting the same cat over and over again. Uh, I think you get the point after seeing the second image here. So let's stop this and uh, let's put back random seed and let's check a little bit about the other settings. Next up here we have models and the SDXL base 1.0 that was the preset model that was preloaded with the uh, Ruin Focus. Now you can select another model. Let's say that for example I, I used the Think Diffusion model here. I can say close up portrait of a viking warrior. Let's remove the lower hair at this preset and now we're using a different stable diffusion model to generate this image. It's going to take a couple of seconds to load the model but uh, after that you're going to be straight back to your beautiful generations. So now our render has started here. We have the viking coming in. It's a man with a helmet. We have some cool backlight here. He's almost like in a studio. Yeah, so we had the image number set to zero here. So he just keeps generating. So we're just going to stop that. We're going to set image number to one and we are going to restart that one. So remember to change back from, from zero to a number if, if you don't want it to infinitely generate. And here's our um, finished image. And uh, I think it looks pretty good for just a quick first generation. Now you might be asking, well, what about all these models? How do I set them? Well, if you are using Think Diffusion, they're going to be preloaded. But if you are using the local version, you are going to need to go into your Ruin Focus folder, Ruin Focus, Models, Checkpoints. And then you can drop them straight into here. Now, I told you about OBP. Well, I didn't tell you about OBP. I kind of hinted at it. So OBP 
is one button prompt and it's probably the coolest feature of ruined focus except for its simplicity it's basically what it says one button prompt you have instant one button prompt and then you have one button prompt with them some settings let me first show you the instant one so if you press instant one button prompt you're getting a random prompt here so now it says realism art by chris cooksey landscape art alien ugly pear shaped figure female surrounded by a couple of females tai chi yada 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 a lot of just random stuff so this can be a super cool way to just generate something creative get some inspiration for something that you haven't previously used you can keep pressing that getting getting something brand new uh, but you can also have a little control over this so let's say that you know that what you want to create you can select the settings here so let's say that i have had a subject type animal here we can set okay you have some artists there's a lot of styles to choose from let's put in whimsical here type of image Let's do digital art and you have like the prompt field here. So here it says place this in front of generated prompt. So you can say snow winter. So now we would get an animal in snow winter with a whimsical digital art style. So our prompt got snow winter stylized by Nicoletta Cecchule digital art furious cavalier King Charles Spaniel in focus hopeful Fuchsia hue bloom octane engine i mean that's pretty cool and if we change this let's say for example that we want a landscape and let's do sci-fi and well let's keep the digital art for now we can do the snow winter yes yeah, do snow winter again and just instant one button prompt that so now we got snow winter digital art winter reads landscape of a crowded egypt snowing rust decor octane engine designed by david a hardy and john Gerard. So it looks like almost like some kind of desert, but there, acts, there is actually snow here. And you can just keep using this random prompt here. And you can put more words in and more settings. It can be more specific uh, with, with what you want. This is just super cool, to be honest. Oh, I like this. Not very sci-fi, but um, a very cool image nonetheless. Now we're going to check Evo in a bit. Uh, it's uh, one of the more experimental features first off we're going to check up the, the power up and the power up is as your cheat code and here's where you have the control nets you have your image to image your upscale and whatnot so let's say that you want a canny high for example you can drop your input image and that we, it will use this as a reference now you don't have a lot of settings like you do in automatic 1111 you can do go into your custom mode here which will give you more control but still not as much let's say you change this to the depth for example you can change the start the stop and the strength just enough amount of options to get uh, very far to be honest and there's even a little in painting feature if you click the little button down here which will give you a little brush to paint the mask with as you can see here and this is basically the same as you get in automatic 1111 now bear in mind this in painting is still a little rough but i expect it to get better once they keep developing the tool now let's check out evo or what i believe is evolution because uh, it kind of evolves your image nine different ways so if we start with a prompt for example woman portrait and press one here for example you can see from the prompts here that some of them are changed. One, some just say woman portrait. This one says Felix portrait. This one says woman Fordham. This one says Los Angeles portrait. And well, the rest say women portrait or woman portrait. So now we're going to get nine rendered images. And after this, we can select one of these nine with the buttons here to keep iterating on. So it's going to evolve from that image moving forward so that i think that's a pretty cool feature to be honest now is it a, a groundbreaking amazing revolutionary feature no but it's kind of fun you know and sometimes that's what the ai generation is all about now i think for the mode here i would probably set that to words so it'll give you more more random generations instead of just changing uh you know the letters here and there like the sandra portrait what, what even is that but i'm gonna speed this up and then we're gonna press the next one so let's say that we like this one number four here we can keep uh, iterating on it so if you press number four here we're gonna get that prompt and a lot of uh, evolutions on 
that. Now you can set your evolve chance here. So that's basically now it's 10% of evolving. You can set it to something even crazier. As you can see, a lot of the prompts get the same woman portrait, woman portrait. So only a few of them are actually changed. So let's say that you set this to 80% uh, for example. So let's quickly make any other, another one. I'm going to pick the, the number five here with evolved chance of 80%. So that will probably give us a lot more randomness here. Again, I'm going to quickly speed this up. So now we have got a lot of weird stuff going on here. And as you can see from the, the prompts, we still have the woman portrait. Then we have Crest T wears, we have Doing Portrait, we have Sorchin Telegraphoscope, wherever that is. And then we have Tripod Tough Tough Lit and Bitrocanteric Amphanthia and Trevi Coarse Tooth. So, I mean, I have no idea what's going on, but we're getting some, some cool stuff. Uh, let's see what the number four was Sorchin Telegraphoscope. So that should be this one. So this is a Sorchin Telegraphoscope. And if you disagree, put it in the comments below and tell me what it really is. And this is a tripod tuftlet. We have our Bitrocantheric Amphanthia. This is really weird, all of this. Quite fun, to be honest. And the last one here, info basically just gives you whatever metadata you have for um, for that particular image. This is Rune Focus. I like it a lot. Test it out locally or in the cloud, whatever works best for you. Hey, have you seen this video here? Check it out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.